Hey guys, Limit Fisherman here, and I got a small little tackle warehouse order for you. It's really small. I just got it. I ordered it the other day, and I got uh, express shipping, the overnight priority mail, which I'm going to tell you what, tackle warehouse is the best as far as your shipping costs. You can get free standard delivery. It'd take, you know, five days, maybe seven, probably about five, I think. It's been a while since I've ordered. I usually do the two-day just because it's only $5 extra. You can get it. You can get the you can get it in uh, about three days or so for me three or four at the most. It's two day delivery, but you know it takes a while, especially if it's a big order for them to get everything. But they're usually really good about it, and they'll give you a call if you have any problems. Tiger Warehouse is absolutely awesome, and they have things that Bass Pro Shops doesn't. A lot of brands and stuff. So guys out there that are kind of new to, to different tackle places, I'm gonna tell you about try out tackle warehouse you're gonna be really impressed at the stuff that they have but anyway i'm gonna move on with this uh this is more like fall time fishing stuff going on here it's pretty small and i've got uh something that they, that's on back order it's a new thing that come out for icast 2012 and i'm really looking forward to getting it i can't wait and i'm very possibly gonna do a whole video just on that uh deal itself because it's i think it's gonna be a real game changer for these tournaments that i have coming up soon and uh definitely for next season as well uh, and maybe even the years to come, it's really gonna. I think it's gonna be a hot lure. And once you once you get an idea of this exact technique, uh, it's really gonna catch on, and it's gonna re be really popular. I wouldn't be surprised if there's several major tournaments, one and maybe even you know uh, the whole top field using it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really looking forward to it. Let's talk about some of the faults I'm fishing. A lot of what you're gonna be using, you're either gonna be using uh minnow type baits and it's something that i'm really just now getting into with the with the big craze of the alabama rig and the jig heads and stuff like that uh i've been really getting into minnow baits and swim baits you know up to four and a half inches years prior to this i really never used a soft plastic jerk bait i never really used minnow type baits you know i guess part of that also had to do with a lot of the lakes that i fish have dirty dirtier water or oconee and sinclair around here for the most part on most parts of the lake and the parts i fish the most and have the best, most success they're pretty they're pretty stained to sometimes even muddy but with the drought but anyway um so but lately this year i've been you know this fall and especially you know the years to come i really want to learn these uh chattahoochee and savannah river chain of lakes and i'm talking about clark's hill lake russell lake hartwell i'm sure you all know about that one with the uh 2008 bass masters classic on that lake also uh lanier I, i'm really gonna get into that one uh the next next i got a tournament there next month but i'm really gonna be getting into that one uh, uh, and next year, but I want to keep moving on with the clear lakes, you know, a lot of minnow type baits and it doesn't really matter how you rig it. All you want to do is just get a rig that's going to match the depth zone. If they're schooling fish, you know, a small weight or, uh, something like that is going to do just fine. Unless you figure that you might want to get underneath those schooling fish and try and catch the bigger ones. Sometimes you can get a minnow bait, get a little bit bigger minnow bait. Uh, and get it down a little bit deeper get a little heavier weight something like that you can very possibly catch the fish that other guys are, aren't catching you know they're catching those schooling fish every now and then you catch a big and schooling but for me i try and get below them that's where the bigger ones are uh you know and i'm not a very good fall fisherman I, as far as i really i really don't fish a whole lot in the fall i used to do hunting and then I, I try and work a lot so I can save up for the next season. But minnow style baits, here's a tiny fluke smoking shad. Um, I'm going to put this on a scrounger head. Uh, probably a quarter ounce to three eighths ounce at the most. Usually it would probably be a quarter ounce this small of a bait. Really great little bait for that. Be uh, be really great for a scrounger head. And then also, here's a new bait for the ICAS 2012. Here's a Lucky, Cla Lucky Craft Blade Cross. Basically it's a drop bait. And my idea with this bait, um, and it's the 110 size, I think that's the bigger size. Yeah, that's the bigger size. My idea with this bait is to get underneath those schooling fish in this clear water. Uh, you get on these humps, secondary points where some of these fish are schooling, or even in the middle of the channel towards the backs of the creeks. Uh, I want to try and maybe get below them in practice. It's one of the things in practice you want to do is try and, you know, see if see if the bigger fish are hitting hitting uh you can catch them first whatever uh key tip in the fall is change your depth zones even if you're chasing schooling fish get below those fish a lot of times even if you have to slow down to plastic sometimes that's the way to catch the bigger fish it really is give it a try and this is something i'm gonna do this is more of a bait to get down deeper sort of like a fish head spin uh but it's really modern and it's it's 
it, I think it'd be better for clear water. It's got a rip bait or jerk bait style to it, which is a great clear water bait. It's got the little blade on it. Great, great bait for clear water. Excellent, excellent right there. Uh, then I uh, got a Taboo Tiny Tim. This is a three inch swim bait. And my idea with this is I wanted to also use this bait for my, uh, for my uh, scroungers. I've really been getting into scroungers a lot. Uh, yeah, and the, I'm gonna got some Davis Bates ones. I think I got them in there. And uh, with all the different sizes, and I'm probably gonna do some videos on that because I love them, man. I tell you what, you rig them with the right baits in the clear water, uh, whether they're, when, when they're shallow, especially, or when they're active in the morning if if they're deeper. Man, I tell you what, it's such a great bait to catch them. They eat it like live bait. You just gotta change what bait you put on it. And man, I tell you, they eat it. It's crazy. Clear water, you would think. I'm normally a crankbait fisherman because I fish a lot of dirty water. But I'm going to tell you what. You get you a scrounger head. You're going to do some well good fishing in the fall in the clear water. Okay, I'm going to talk about this next bait right here. This is a special deal. And I'm probably going to do a video on this as well. This is a Lucky Craft Sammy 65. It's a really small little walking type bait. Uh, let's see if I can get the size on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. But it's two and a half inches long. I'm sorry, I have it pointed off. I was looking through the it's two and a half inches long. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Two and a half inches long. And it's uh, seven thirty seconds of an ounce. And if you want to, you can put that into, uh, you know, whatever. Like it'd be, uh, probably be about a quarter ounce, three sixteenths or less, whatever. Anyways, this is going to be a great bait. Um, you could use this on a spinning rod when the fish are schooling, if, if the fishing is really tough and they just don't bite. But the way I'm going to use it, unless the fishing gets tough, as long as the fishing is, you know, good or really good, I plan on using this as a schooling bait. I'm going to use a double topwater rig. This is going to be my front one, and then I'm going to tie a leader, probably about 12 to 14 inches behind it, and I'm going to tie a bigger topwater. It's going to be like a Sammy, uh, bigger Sammy, or, or a Spook or something like that. Dynamite. You can catch two fish at a time. I saw it already at Hartwell when I got my tournament this weekend. I pre-fished there. I'll tell you what. Uh, I saw multiple fish falling in a <laughs> fish when I would catch them. I'm talking spots should just be hovering around it like crazy. It's like a cloud of fish. It's going to be an excellent. I'm going to do a video on that for you guys. Um, then here, here's the Davis Aaron Martin's uh, shaky fish. This right here is the, what size? This is a 3 16 And I'm going to get more into this once I get to learn what sizes is better for different plastics, different depths. And I might play around with... Uh, uh, cutting a little bit of that bill and angling them a little bit for different different situations. Great bait in the fall. If you've got clear water, schooling fish or not, I'm telling you, a scrounger in clear water is a bait you need to get some of. It is so great. Here's another one. This is a super long hook. And this is something I'm going to use for the bigger baits. And I'm generally going to use a bigger head on it. Quarter ounce up to three eight, uh, of it, usually three eighths plus. You know, and these are great baits, honestly, for offshore fishing in the summer. Uh, you know, I've heard Aaron Martin's using bigger baits like big swim baits going out of Kentucky Lake, getting these one ounce, one and a half ounce sizes that they offer, and bombing them out there and fishing it like a like a jig or something, man. It's excellent. Uh, and I believe that's a three eighths ounce, quarter ounce. Felt pretty heavy though. And they come two in a pack, and they're they're somewhat expensive. They're like five dollars for two, but they catch fish, and you fish them most of the time. At least for me. Uh, above a lot of cover from personally just me so far so I don't worry about losing them too much and they catch fish so that's all I need to know really 3 8 ounce size here super long hook that's going to be for my bigger baits you know big uh, big swimming flutes uh, swim baits in the 4 to 5 inch sizes that's what that's going to be for and here I got some treble hooks for my jerk baits and top waters and I'm going to get more into the specifics I want to get a really um, in-depth video on treble hooks. For me, uh, landing fish is very important. I figured this out about two years ago that I don't want to lose any fish, uh, you know, if I can. And it, I, I go way beyond probably a lot of fishermen because I hate it more than anything. It, whether I'm practicing, whatever, I hate to lose fish. I hate it. So I've I've done research and I've done a lot of videos and I finally come out with a system that I feel really good about treble hooks and I'm going to get more into it. I'm going to get a video out for you guys uh, probably by the end of this year on some really in-depth stuff uh, that I've learned from Kevin Van Dam, the master. I can hear him talk about treble hooks and, and which ones to use all day long. I'm just a nerd like that when it comes to fishing because he's got so much knowledge. He, you know... He's got so much knowledge to it all. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a pretty small order, but it had a lot of stuff. 
and uh, I'm going to try and give you maybe a few tips for fall. Uh, I'm going to probably do a fall time video, but just stick to minnow style baits, minnow style baits in the clear water, top water if they're schooling, and uh, and fish your way from the backs of the creeks on out till you find the bait fish, till you find the fish. A lot of times the fish, the bass, will be behind the bait fish. So say, the, say you see a lot of concentrations of bait fish in the backs of the creeks, there's a good chance that the bass may not be in the backs of the creeks. They may be on the secondary points making their way in. But a lot of times when the bat when the bait fish concentrated way in the backs of the creeks, a lot of times the ba the bass are going to be there because the bass are going to be pinning them pinning them in farther and farther so they can feed on them. Um, it's this video is almost 11 minutes, so I'm going to end it pretty quick. I want to talk about something really exciting for me personally. I got a new trolling motor on my boat. I got an 18 and a half foot Ranger with a crap load of tackle, so it weighs a lot. And I felt like I've been underpowered in my trolling motor for a while. I had a 65 pound, oh, no, I had a, yeah, I had a 65 pound uh, Minn Kota All Terrain, which is like an eight year old model. And uh, as the year's gone on, I fished a ton this year, and I felt like I've been dying out and losing a lot of power. Finally got this bad boy, and I am so damn happy to have this. I haven't had a full day's fishing with it yet. I've been working, I've been starting my new job. I've been working a lot, and I hope to work a lot more this this year. Um, but uh, I'll be out tomorrow, more than likely, getting out and getting a full day on Hartwell. I got the tournament this weekend, and today is uh, Tuesday, so I'll be out there tomorrow on Wednesday. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and if there's anything you'd like to see on the Minko to Maximum, I, I doubt that you do, because it's such a, an older trolling motor in a way. It's spent out for quite a few years. Uh, I'm just happy to see that. That's awesome. But anyway, uh, it's been out for a few years, but if there's anything you'd like to know or, or a video you'd like to put out there, please leave it in the comments and like if you enjoyed to learn something. And if you've got any stories or anything you'd like to share about the baits that I showed, anything like that, or any fall time fishing tips for myself or any of the viewers, please share. It uh, makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. I'm out, guys.